Hey, good morning everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite subject, leather. So stay with me for that. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is where my leather comes from. And I'm pretty sure all leather comes from the same place. Um, I do have my manufacturer who tans the leather. I do have them do a lot of different special customized processes for me so that my leather is unique to me. And uh, But let me tell you that I get asked, um, where does leather come from? Is it sourced from cows who are bred for meat or are they bred specifically for their skin? And so I wanted to lay this question to rest once and for all. The leather is almost always, I have never ever heard of it any other way, it has been sourced from the food industry. It is a byproduct of the food industry. So to me it is good stewardship on humankind to use all of the animal so that nothing is wasted, so that you know where the leather comes from. It is sourced from the food industry. So I hope that answers a lot of questions for a lot of you. Now what I wanted to do is I want to talk about uh, the different types of leather and more specifically, um, well, mostly the types of leather that I carry at ChicSparrow.com and then some other types of leather that are out there because I get asked these questions quite a lot in email and on the phone. So I thought that I would take a few minutes and explain to you the different types of leather and what the terms mean because I know it can be a little bit confusing for someone who may not be in the leather industry or who just maybe just has never been told. So the first one is full grain leather, which is the top quality that a leather can be. Now the term full grain does not refer to the thickness of the leather because you can split full grain down until it's just microscopically thin, almost, but, but very, very thin, like cardstock thin. So you can make full grain leather very thin and it's still considered full grain. So I have a sample here and I'm gonna share it with you so that you can kind of see. Now this is um, my tumbler tote and I don't know, don't know if it will focus that close, but it is full grain leather, okay? So let me first start by explaining what grain is, okay? So <clears throat> inside, this is the flesh side, okay? And I have stuff in here, maybe I should have taken it out, but inside is the flesh side, all right? And it's soft and nappy and has texture to it and on the outside is considered the grain of the leather. So the top surface is the grain of the leather. And when it's a full grain, it means that it has all the natural markings that the animal had on its skin. So all the bug bites, all the environmental markings, barbed wire, um, scars, all of those are going to be on the surface of the leather because it's considered full grain. Okay, so that is full grain leather. Top grain leather is often confused as full grain leather, when in reality it isn't, it's far from it. So top grain leather is where they have taken the top surface of the leather and they have sanded it away so it's no longer there. So it's the top grain has been sanded away and then they artificially imprint another grain on top of it and then they finish out the leather. So a top grain leather has been refinished and they do this because they want to hide the imperfections. So all of those range marks and those lovely markings that naturally occur during the animal's lifetime have been erased and then an artificial uh, surface has been imprinted and then and that is the finished product. So it's more artificial, it's not natural, but it does have a very even texture and it does look very nice. The terms corrected grain is referring to top grain leather. So when you hear the term top grain, know that you're getting an artificial surface, okay? Artificial surface. Now suede, I also do not use this kind of leather too much, although the camouflage that sometimes I carry 
that is considered a suede. And then I do sometimes have a pig skin, which is also considered suede. So suede is soft and nappy and has kind of a combed texture. And it is made from the center split of the leather. They will take leather and they will split off the top a part of it so the full grain will be split off and then they'll there they will split off the bottom because they want the leather to have an even thickness and so the bottom gets thrown away the middle split will often get turned into suede now the leather industry has a finite amount of cows so they try to do as much with the leather as they possibly can and some leather comes in and it's wonderful beautiful skin that can be made into full grain leather. And then others are pretty scarred up, not looking too great, so then they make that into top grain leather. And almost all leather is going to be split down to the thickness that the client and the customer wants. For me, I like my leather to be less than eight uh, ounces thick. And so often leather is quite thick, and so they split it. Okay, they split off the bottom, they split off the top. The part that's in the middle gets made into suede. And uh, suede is a beautiful, very strong leather, and uh, it's it feels luxurious, and if you ever get the opportunity to own something made out of a suede, then you should treasure it because it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful leather. <clears throat> it's also good stewardship on the leather industry's part. Okay, and the last leather that I'm going to talk about today, there are many, many types of leather, but the last one that I'm going to talk about today is called PU leather or bicast leather. Now you will have people in like the fashion industry, they use this leather or this type of leather all the time. And they always say that it's genuine leather. Now the word genuine leather means that it came from a cow or an animal of some sort, was tanned and turned into leather. That's all genuine leather means. It does not in any way denote the type of quality the leather is. So if you see something that says genuine leather, you know that it's made out of some sort of animal hide and <clears throat> You, you should not assume that it's top quality leather, okay? Because PU leather or uh, bicast leather is actually, it's, it's suede, it's kind of the suede before they turn it into suede. And then it has a layer of polyurethane put over top and then a new texture stamped on top. And then, you know, it comes in all kinds of different colors, uh, usually really bright colors. Um, I mean, they can also make it look like real top grain leather. Um, they can also make it look like full grain leather, although they almost never do because the purpose of doing the um, polyurethane over the top is to have a perfect surface. So like, um, I have this for an example. Okay, so uh, this is uh, polyurethane leather. The underside of it is kind of like a suede and then they laid over top of it that polyurethane and they stamped in their own texture. And uh, they also, when they put the polyurethane on it, that's when they put the design on it as well. The one way that you can tell if something is PU leather and that's capital P, capital U, leather. The way that you can tell it that that is PU leather is if you put water on it, it won't soak into the leather. It just stays on the surface. Um, another is it's usually very, very smooth, very, very uniform. So if you look at the surface of it and it's practically perfect, then you know it is probably not uh, full grain, top grain, or any other kind of grain, it's probably an artificial surface. And it will not feel like leather either, and it kind of has kind of a, a chemical scent to it. Now, all of my leathers, okay, so all of my leathers are full grain leathers. I do not use any PU leathers. 
um, my pelican leather is a full grain leather that has been hot stuffed so it is very water resistant when you put water on it it will sit on the top and that is because it has a very high fat content in the leather and that is what protects the leather from moisture and water but yeah all of my leather is full grain leather uh, unless I state otherwise, but uh, it is full grain. I have in the past used a couple of PUs. Those were the bright pink, and I did a couple of totes out of those. They were bright pink, they were white. It was also kind of that teal turquoise color. I did them last summer. And after I worked with that leather, I said I will never work with it again because I can't stand it. Uh, anything that I work with in my shop is because I love it. And I want you to love it too, so I try to always get the best quality that I possibly can. And I'm going to go and take a full circle now, and I'm going to say that my leather is sourced from from the food industry here in the United States. So even if it's tanned, say, in Mexico, like the creme brulee is actually tanned in Mexico, however, it came from the food industry here in the United States. They ship it down to Mexico, it gets made into leather, and then they ship it back. And uh, my other leather supplier, they get their hides from Canada and the United States. And then my other leather supplier gets their hides from the United States. So that is all I have for you today. That's all I wanted to talk to you about was leather and what the basic types of leather were that I am most familiar with. I have done a ton of research. Leather is kind of my passion in case you haven't noticed, but I do very much enjoy learning new stuff. I enjoy researching it and uh, I love to know as much as I possibly can about the materials that I am using. And so if you have any more questions about leather or my leather specifically, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. If you would like to see more videos like this, please give me a thumbs up and uh, like and subscribe and uh, I will see you next video. Thank you so much. Bye bye.